And there's no better place to do that than the National Kaohsiung Marine University. There, we have Huang Kui Ming, professor in the Department of Aquaculture, who will give us an inside scoop on this underwater genius. Welcome, 我们为什么要把它称为蓝藻因为这些藻类它的营养都会被破坏掉。从以往的这个研究，包括所谓的医学上的报告的话，它是一个所谓的均衡物种之一，它可以把我们体内的所不需要的、所多余的这个废弃物，它可以清除，然后去补充。Ch
。绿藻的话，它是属于一个下沉的藻种。那下沉的藻种，它需要比较大的一个搅拌方式来做搅拌。嗯、我们培养的时候，就是说利用利用它的搅拌，让它不会沉淀下来。对。To harvest chlorella, algae water first goes through a process of concentration before being spray dried. After about 10 seconds, the water will turn to powder form. Its appearance is similar to that of green milk powder. With an annual production output of up to 1,000 tons, the factory continues to expand to meet with the growing global demand for the product. As we leave Mr. Lee and his team, one can't help but have an appreciation for even the tiniest things in life. Returning to the city as night falls, we made it just in time to catch the nightlife of the city that never sleeps. Winding down, the crew decides to stop for a break. And what better place to do that than to visit a food stall selling chlorella dumplings? Come, let's more and more, chlorella is making its appearance in everyday foods like noodles and wasabi. In Japan alone, consumption of chlorella products amounts to over 100 million US dollars every year. As popularity of chlorella surges, it is no longer just a science experiment in creating an alternative source of edible protein. Today, it is becoming a real solution, and with its proven health properties, it really is becoming the food of the future. While Taiwan brings us chlorella, India brings us our next discovery. Amidst the dense fog of pollution, this fruit may be a shining beacon of protection against the environment.